Uh, we did a field trip with the ICRC team to central Syria, to the area of Homs and Hama, Salamia and Al Rastan. It's an area which has been definitely affected by the fighting and still is. We saw very, very different levels of destruction. We went uh, to the uh, opposition-held area of the city of Rastan, which was basically almost totally destroyed, where people uh, live among the ruins, and uh, it's almost amazing that people can survive there. Uh, we met the civilians, uh, we saw how they lived and strived to get by, but uh, we also went to op uh, government-held areas, where people are also struggling because there was a big water canal that was uh, broken. But you could see that everybody was affected by the violence, but certainly it was not the same destruction all over. You saw beautiful fields and you saw ter terrible destruction within one hour's uh, move. The thing that struck me most was the destruction in the city of Al Rastan, talking to doctors who had almost nothing and working desperately to serve the needs of that population. And then there were the people at the water uh, points in Salamia, who every day have to go to the water point outside the house to get just the limited amount of drinking water available that we had uh, arranged for. Uh, those were maybe the two, two most uh, striking experiences, different situation, but everybody on both sides of the front line affected by, uh, by the war and the conflict. Well, we visit uh, field hospitals in opposition held area and uh, Basically, they need everything. Uh, they're working under extremely difficult conditions. And I had to tell the doctors who were struggling there, I said, I would like to give you everything. And I can give you nothing because at this stage, we're not allowed to bring in uh, medical aid uh, to uh, medical structures in opposition held areas. So uh, the needs are there. It's obvious when you're in the middle of fighting or have wounded or normal medical cases in the population, you need support. Um, and this was just one place, but clearly there are huge medical needs, many places in Syria. There are thousands and hundreds of thousands of wounded. And particularly, it's uh, difficult for us to get across to the other side of the front line. I went there in the field now to look at water, and this is an example where we can really do a lot, both on the government side and on the oppositional area. Water is flowing in all directions to all people, and together with the SARC, local authorities, we can do a lot, and we do a lot. So this is working very well. But of course, we're pleading with all parties uh, to have access. Let us go to all the places where, which are affected by the, by the fighting, whether it's a destroyed city or a, a relatively well-functioning village. People are affected everywhere. We will assess and we will try to meet the needs according to the needs on an impartial basis. So we're just pleading for this humanitarian space in between uh, the fight which, to which we are not a part. I see, I see today, uh, together with SARC, has considerable access in Syria. And we can do a lot, and we do a lot for millions of people. But then there are areas we cannot access because the fighting and the conflict is very intense and we're not given permission to access. In particular, we, we have a dialogue with the authorities because we want and need access to meet humanitarian needs on opposition-held areas for the wounded, like the place I visited, uh, the field hospital, and other places around uh, Damascus. So uh, the needs are there, the capacity on our side is there, but we're not able to do what we would like to do to serve the Syrian people uh, under the current conditions. The needs are enormous. We want to do more uh, when things open up.